Hey, Steve Bazic Architect. We're out here at our Build Show Build Boston site. Now you might've saw the progress tour on the outside. You might've seen the one in the basement. This one here, we're gonna walk around on the first floor here and we'll go through room by room and we'll uh, check out the uh, progress here for the first floor. But uh, before we get started on the tour, I just wanted to make mention, um, we are doing a 24 episode series of Build Show Build Boston. It's on the Build Show Network. I'm a contributor there, good friend Matt Reisinger. And uh, on buildshownetwork.com, under the Originals tab, you can find Build Show Build Boston. We're on, I believe, episode eight at this point. Um, so we have 24 episodes in all. You'll be able to follow the whole project from day one through us handing over the keys and calling it end of construction. So anyways, let's get on with the tour. Standing here in the front entry, front door behind me, there's that cantilevered overhang that we saw from the outside. Pretty simple. It's a modest front entryway here. Can get, uh, you know, three or four people in here comfortably. We got a nice big closet here for guest coats, etc. And then we breach the threshold here and voila, we're in the uh, great room, family room, but we'll come back to that. I want to go down the hall here and also start down at the garage entry and show you all of the utility spaces. Then we'll come and talk about the great room here. So we'll just take a quick wall down here and then we'll retreat back. <clears throat> so this is the entrance door from the garage. We have that four car garage there. We also have access down to the basement um, from here. So I come in here, this is basically the utility corridor here. We have this hallway, basically mud room, laundry room, and powder room. Um, the mud room here, again, not, uh, not a whole lot of magic, but it will look nice. We have about eight or nine feet of closet here with a double set of doors. And then here where all the windows are staged right now, this will be all built-ins, lockers, um, shoe storage, shelves above, etc. We have a door here. This is that hobby plant room that I spoke about. Um, one of the homeowners, his hobby is trees and plants and such. So we have a room here faces due south, nice big nine foot by six foot window there. And then we'll have a secondary means of egress here out the back that will take us out to that courtyard pool area out there. But this is all plant room. Um, a couple things to notice here, um, obviously we have our warm board, warm board, you can see all of the channels. Might be better if I come over here and can talk about that. You can see the channels here running through the floor sheathing. So this is an inch and an eighth um, subfloor. It has these router channels that will then receive a pipe. They'll snap into that and this is all radiant floor heating system throughout the house here. Um, all of our framing here is for the larger walls. We have some LVL stud work. We also have a whole bunch of Doug fur. Again, it's the Roseburg framing package that we're using here. Um, we have our triple glaze windows from Shuko USA have been in. We got the first one in um, this past week working with the uh, framers on that. For those of you not familiar with a Euro European tilt turn window, um, these are triple glazed units. It's an aluminum frame and aluminum sash. It's thermally broken, meaning that the aluminum outside does not touch the aluminum inside. Um, the handles, if I rotate it 90 degrees, I can now open the window. That is the turn function. So I have the ability to easily clean all of the operable windows. And if I continue to rotate it another 90 degrees and pull on it, that is the venting option or what we label as the tilt function. So that's how it gets its name, tilt, turn, and it's a triple glazed window. And you can see when you rotate that handle, it really draws. There's catches at every corner 
along that sash so it really gets drawn in to that uh, window frame and gets that good seal. When you're striving for, you know, passive house type air tightness, you know, windows become a very big part because if I pressurize the house, then I'm pushing the window against that weather stripping. But if the house is being depressurized, those windows are getting pulled away from the weather stripping and, um, you know, the, the, the less, uh, performing windows are going to pull away from that weather stripping and uh, induce some air leakage there. But anyways, pressing on here, um, you can see this is our laundry room. We have a nice big pocket door here. So the whole opening isn't the door. Most of it will get filled in half of it with the pocket. And then the door, um, again, marching down. You can see here, this is a really good shot of our water management system at all the windows. We have our back dam. We have a slope sill here, which uh, we'll see there's some areas where uh, the uh, stretch tape isn't installed yet. And then we'll have some blocks here that set the, set the window on top of. And the whole idea is if any water gets into that system, it migrates down to this pan system. The pan system is connected to our rain screen. So any water in the system is forced to go outside due to the negative slope of that sill. And the back dam stops that water from coming inboard. Um, you can see it here. Basically, this is, you know, a cross section of we just use a piece of cedar clapboard. That's how we make up the sill. So you can see that that's sloped. And then we do the counter blocks where we reverse those and just simply tape them in, in place. So the window will now come and sit on top of those blocks and water will have the ability to run out underneath it. Um, another thing of note, you know, when we cut a window into our opening here, we have our nice continuous weather resistive barrier on the outside, which in this case is a zip R9. Um, we actually have a piece of it right here. So, um, but it's basically 7 16 zip where the inch and a half of polyiso foam is laminated to it. So it's basically an insulating sheathing um, or an insulation that is attached to the sheathing. I like to call it a sweater um, or a jacket, however you want to look at it, but uh, basically puts that on the outside of the house in a continuous fashion. Um, but when we cut that opening, I want to maintain continuity of my weather resistive barrier. So we oversize the rough openings by one inch and we just line all of the opening with the 7 16 inch regular zip here. So we maintain that continuity of our weather resistive barrier around the corner so that now when I install the window, I can bridge from the window to my weather resistive barrier that's already inside the window opening. This is the uh, powder room, basically just a toilet and sink. But then we breach into this opening here and this is the great room. Right, so everything in front of me here is kitchen. We'll have a nice big kitchen island, a bunch of associated cabinetry, a nice big window to the outside. You can see it there. Um, behind me is all the living space. There is a wall here that's in front of the stairway, pretty much where those white pieces of wood are that'll rise up to the ceiling. It's just not in place yet. We're still, um, figuring out some of the finer details of that. And then we have this whole alcove area here with the nice big window out to the street, turns the corner um, and folds around it. Um, this is the dining area. So the ceiling there, that'll come out here to uh, help designate this area as being an area within the larger area here. Um, and then finally, over here, we have the, uh, that large lift and slide door with the transom above. And it's, you know, I, I'm sitting here and I'm on video, but the minute I come into the sun, it is amazing how much energy 
is packed into that sunlight. Just stepping from there to here, you get that whole sense of warmth with that sunlight. We're in climate zone five here. We're heating dominated. So anytime I can get energy from the sun for free, I try and pack that into our house. A um, couple things here, you can see we have a nice big package out there. You can see how the windows come from Shuko USA, fully packaged up. We have our basement windows here, but all shrink wrapped. They build crates to put these things on. They don't leave anything to chance as far as these windows getting damaged. All of the windows inside the crates are packed. They're wrapped. They have foam corners. They do an extremely diligent job of ensuring that we get a brand new product with no problems delivered to the job site. Continuing on through the house here, we breach this threshold. This whole space here is a home office for the homeowners. Now, the reason there is no framed wall here is this is going to be a full glass wall with a barn door inside and attached to that glass wall there. So there is no wall here except for the glass wall that we will put in at some of the finishing stages. The two openings here are both pocket doors where this side of that door will get filled in, the right side of that door will get filled in. We'll have a door that can get out to the owner suite there and a pocket door here that if we wanted to close off the secondary bedrooms. Um, coming through here, we also have an area here where we'll have some bookcases and cabinetry um, that will get made to fit in this area. Coming down here, um, I'm going to take a walk into here. This is the front bedroom. Notice that uh, the window arrangement for the front bedroom is the same kind of corner arrangement that we had over at the dining area there. So when you pull up, there's some cohesiveness in the design um, as you move down the building. We have a nice big closet room, uh, bedroom here. Measures were probably on the order of about 13 by 15 feet of bedroom space there. Right outside the bedroom, we have a bathroom here. I like to call it Jack and Jill. Um, there's all kinds of names for it, but basically there is a sink room and then there's another door here. This door will actually have an opaque glass panel so that the sink room will benefit from the light in the window there, but you'll get the privacy of the opaqueness of the glass. On the other side of that door, we have the toilet and tub. Now, the whole purpose of this is, is if you had a son and a daughter, well, one of them can be in here brushing their teeth while the other one is taking a shower and the one that's taking the shower doesn't lock up the total use of the bathroom. And then of course, across the backside here, we have a nice uh, storage closet, linen closet. So making our way down here, we have yet, just as another secondary bedroom with its closet, nice big window arrangement there. And then we have the threshold here Everything behind me in this threshold is owner suite. So as we move down the hall here, this is the walk-in closet. Walk-in closets are pretty simple, double loaded closet. Double loaded means there's closet rod down that side and there's closet rod down this side. And then in the middle, we'll have an eight foot peninsula that's uh, 36, 40 inches high of an island. Or, and then at the end, we'll have a bench so you can sit down, tie your shoes, etc. So basically a giant dresser in the middle of the closet and then that divides it up the sides for each occupant. Um, we have the front doors here. These are swinging doors. Um, one of the things that I like to do is on a swinging door, you can see I build in a little pocket. It's a pocket so that when the doors are in the open position, they actually park up against the wall and then there's a wall here to hide. So as you come down the hallway and walk, you don't see the end of that door sitting in the hallway. It's actually recessed into that pocket nice and neatly. Um, continuing down here, this is the second of the two volume spaces. The one being the uh, great room there. 
This one here also series of parallel cord trusses. Up above, we have our high transom window there. This is the bedroom proper. We have a beautiful nine foot square window here that will take us and give us that view out to the pool area. We'll have a bunch of built-in dressers. They're gonna be low-lying drawers um, underneath that window opening. And then finally, the last space in the house, the owner's bathroom. So you come through the door here, we have linen closet there. Window again, stand in here brushing your teeth, you get to take a view of the pool. Um, we have a vanity on this side. We have a vanity on this side. The toilet is around the corner in its own little alcove. The shower here, we talked about that in the basement video. You can see that that's been dropped down. The purpose of that is we'll build up the shower floor now so that we get a flush condition with the bathroom floor and so that we don't have any curb that we're stepping over, basically a curbless system. Lastly, we have the doorway here and the doorway here, it works. We're getting that Southern uh, sky and Southern exposure here, but this gives the option to the occupants to go and take an outdoor shower. So it literally goes out into the shower. Um, that'll be all enclosed. And so you can wake up in the morning, you can come out here and take your shower or we'll also have a little platform on the outside where that shower can be utilized from any of the people using the pool on the outside. So it kind of does double duty in, the, in that you have access from the bathroom, but you also have access from the pool. So let's go and uh, we'll head back out to the great room there and we'll talk about a few things and then we'll uh, wrap up this quick tour. So, <clears throat> yeah, really excited to see uh, the windows going in. You know, some of these are some good sized monsters um, filling these holes. So, um, Shuko USA out of Connecticut, we have uh, the builder has this whole flashing table all set up where they do all their cutting and prep work for the flashing. And then again, you can see here, we're in the great room, one of those volume spaces. We have the parallel core trusses. This will be a vented roof assembly up here. Notice that all of the framing in here, because of the height and the fact that we're gonna have cabinetry hanging on a bunch of these walls, we opted to move towards an LVL stud, which is gonna give us a much straighter wall, sturdier wall in terms of the height of the wall and carrying these he the larger headers here for these large openings. But anyways, we'll wrap it up here. We're at the family room again, buildshownetwork.com under the originals tab. You can find all of the episodes there. You have the ability to binge watch them at your leisure. Go check them out. Um, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. We'll try and bring you uh, regular uh, videos here all the time, share what we're doing. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of sharing information. So uh, we'll get that out to you. And uh, yeah, short of that. Until next time, Steve Bazek Architect out here at our Build Show Build Boston site.